grouping and combining. I have two objects here. And in Outliner, Window, Outliner, you can see that they show up with this icon, okay, indicating mesh. You can rename these in the Outliner by double clicking here and capitalizing the first letter. What happens if you don't capitalize some of the commands is it puts a one after it. So I just get in the habit of using a naming convention with a capital letter at the first. Now if I take both objects and try to rotate them, they are rotating based upon their local rotations, which means each object has its own local rotation or local pivot point. And when you s rotate them in world space, they rotate fine this way. They rotate fine only that way though. They also have problem scaling. Notice if I scale these. Okay, to rectify this, we can use a thing called groups. If you go to general, we can group these objects together. Notice in outliner now, I have this. I can hit the plus mark and I have two things in this group. If I go to the group, it's pivot point screwed up. So I can go modify center pivot. Now I'll be using center pivot a lot for things. So I would say center pivot is one of the one commands that should be up on your shelf is not. Mine is because I have the ability to make new shelf items. Hold shift and command over any object inside here, any menu object like center pivot. Let go and in a few seconds you'll see center pivot now is on your shelf. I have two of these so in order to get rid of them you have to go to Settings and Preferences, Shelf Editor, and in the Polygon menu, I can page down, and I have two center pivots. I can click on one of them and delete it. So that's how you quickly add that to the shelf. So I guess I covered one more thing in this video. Okay, grouping allows you to do this, and to break a group up, you hold middle mouse button, click and drag over the objects to unbreak, to break the group. And you can get rid of the group by clicking on it and deleting it. The next thing is called combining the objects. You'll see a huge difference here. So if you highlight both objects, go mesh combine, I get this. And I get these very confusing looking nodes in here. This is history. For every amount of history that's in Maya, Maya will move slower. Think of history as an undo. Okay? But history is a bad thing and a good thing in a way. I would say, as a beginning student, you should always learn to delete by type history every so often. That way, nodes that are appearing in here do not kind of interfere with memory. Again, anytime you combine or group, you notice that the center pivot gets messed up and moves back to world space center. So I have to hit my center pivot button. The difference between grouping and combining is I no longer have the ability to go into the other object. Okay, This is one object. So this ports over to applications better when you combine. When you group, it only lives in Maya. So anytime you port over to another program, it necessarily breaks. So now let's go in here, go mesh separate. Again, what happens here is you get a group formation first. So when you separate, it breaks it up to a group. And if you want it out of the group, middle mouse button, click and drag outside that group structure. Click on both objects and edit delete by type history. Okay. So center pivot.
So keep a clean scene. Keep only meshes in here if possible. Uh, whenever I see things like the the shape nodes or some kind of transform nodes or anything in here, you know, I mark students down for stuff like that because you should always keep a very clean scene. Keep only your meshes and always delete by type history. All right, now that you've seen uh, the ability to group and combine, please move on to the next video where I cover some more.